All right, look at this. Isn't that cool, little shader effect? Well, this is all created, and this is in the browser, by the way, with a new tool in Alpha called Paper. All right, so think of Paper kind of like Figma, except there's built-in shader effects and a lot of AI features. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we create this today from scratch. So here is Paper, it's at paper.design, that's the URL. And once you create a new project, you'll see that we have a familiar UI. We have the frame tool. That's where we're going to get started. When you click that, we have the familiar, you know, the presets like we see in any, any other design tool. I'm going to choose 1920 by 1080. Now, I'm going to give the background of this a gradient real quickly. We're just going to make this maybe a little bit of blue. This would be on the brighter side. And then this one right here is going to be same thing, a little bit of blue, but a little bit more so, except also change this to a radial gradient. Okay, so now what we'll do is, I guess um, we'll kind of switch gears. I'll show you the AI features. Um, this is the shader part, which we're not gonna get into yet. Down here is where we go to image generation AI features. So you'll see a familiar prompt box down here. So what I'll say is create a simple a vector illustration of a flying dove against a blue background. All right, now it's not going to be truly vector. It's still gonna be bitmap, but it's gonna put it in the style of a vector graphic. I don't want anything with white outlines or black outlines uh, because I think it's a little bit harsh, but you'll see here in a second. Ah, darn. So I already did this and I was able to generate um, one that I actually liked. So if I go back here to this one, I'm just gonna grab one of the ones I really liked from the um, my demo projects. And so now I'll just click uh, this one. So now I'll click on this one. And what you can do though is, what's really cool is like you can right click and say, hey, re uh, remove background right here. So it'll remove the background, but what's also really cool after it removes it is you can right click and choose vectorize. So now it's gonna create a copy of that, except now it's gonna be vectorized with a transparent background because you remove the background in that step. So now this is completely vector. Very, very cool. There's a lot of other cool things you can do with the image generative features. You know, you can select one right here, come back here, and now you can actually make um, adjustments on existing, you know, designs that you've brought in. So I'm just going to delete that. The one we're going to use is right here. I really like this one, but we're not going to integrate it just yet. We will in a little bit. So next up, let's create some types. So hit T for the type tool, left click. I'm going to put cloudways right there. Can't see it because it's small and white. So let's uh, give it kind of like a darker blue. We'll make this B boss and we'll change it to like 310 for the size. Now it's getting all screwed up because of that issue, which we can always change the width here to fit content. Okay, and the height as well to fit content. There we go. So now that we have that in the middle, um, we can right click and wrap this in a Flexbox container. And then now we have access to Flexbox properties like you've seen in any other app, whether that's you know, Webflow, Framer, Figma, whatever. So this should all be pretty familiar if you understand some of those tools or either any of those tools. And for the, uh, when you have something that's in a Flexbox container, we have different options for your width and height typically. So we have fit content here. We could change this to like a width of 100% and center it. There we go. So now if we take this element and bring it in, it's kind of responsive in a minimal context. Um, and then what it could do is, you know, we could just duplicate the whole thing, control D, and kind of just move that down, or we could take the whole overall frame, or take both of them, wrap them in a new frame, right click, frame selection, and then add flex box right there, and then center that up, change the Y position up here to zero, all right, and we can then take this overall frame and change the height from fit to 100%. Just doing some quick updates here. The reason there's so much space between them is because this, this Cloudways type has 
a lot of uh, high line height, so 150%, let's change that to 90, it's a little bit better. And then this type down here, we're gonna need to change that to like, let's say 90 pixels, or no, 60, there we go. And then I'm gonna duplicate it, Control D, select the parent frame, and then we'll change this to a horizontal uh, adjustment there, and then give it a little bit of a gap like that. And then I'll double click here, and we're gonna say flying through the clouds. So as you can see, this is a very you know familiar tool. Everything's pretty solid so far. Um, we're gonna say tonight at seven, whatever. <laughs> and then now, if I bring this in, ah, it's not working anymore, so why is that? Okay, well, let's just take a look at our frames. So this is a frame here. It's because the parent frame has a hard-coded width, width value. So if we just change that to 100% and then take the overall frame, there we go. Kind of responsive. You could ask, you know, for the type to be fluid and when we get to the or the cursor step because we're going to integrate this as well into cursor within a React project. And for now I'm happy with that. This is good. Now let's go ahead and integrate like a shader effect. So right here is where you access shaders. When you click on it, you're gonna see this. You have different categories of shaders, like dots and grids, there's only three. There's only four here for gradients and colors. Obviously this will get way larger as the tool matures. I like this smoke ring thing over here, so I'm gonna click on it. And what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna specify, first of all, when you select it in the property inspector, you have parameters that are specific to that particular shader. So all the shaders have their own custom properties for you know good adjustment. Um, I am going to get rid of the background. So I'm gonna change the opacity to zero. All right, and then I also, let's see here. Um, I wanna make sure that this thing sits on top of everything. So we have hard-coded layout values here um, such as width and height. What we can do is hit fill container and fill container. And let's put this, there we go, uh, right there. And then take the frame and put it above it. There we go. So when you move these around, you can then start to create a little bit of a, you know, stacking effects here, essentially. The Y value, I'm going to put zero, but the height value, 100%. Now, if we change these, let's make the speed a little faster take the scale up, take the thickness down, maybe increase the radius. Ah, this is starting to look pretty cool. Um, yeah, that works pretty well. If I take the overall frame, maybe adjust the middle value a little bit brighter. There we go, I like that. So now we're doing something interesting. Now what's really cool is we can also change the blend mode like of the, um, the shader effect. So you know, maybe if you want that, oh, you can still see the type in this context a little bit better. Color dodge, you get some really interesting effects when you do this. Let's just use uh, overlay, I think that's pretty cool. Now, if I take this and scale this in, it's not quite responsive. So if we take the smoke ring, again, make sure it is 100% width and height. Now it should work as being kind of like, at least a little bit responsive. The type obviously would need to be fixed as well. Um, so that's cool. I uh, now let me go back to normal. What we'll do is let's integrate this thing. So I'm just going to throw it in and slap it on there. Right click and we're going to wrap in flex. Take the flex. Let's just do zero zero. Width is going to be hundred percent. Height is going to be hundred percent, and then center it. And then now we could take the vector and maybe make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and. Look, it stays situated in the center. All right, so let's say that's your little component. You know, this is your hero section or whatever. And now you want to integrate it into your actual web app. Web app. So how would you do that? Well, we can right click or make sure you take the overall frame container. If you just try to take, you know, these elements individually, it's not going to work, especially if you have a frame or a shader effect. I found that select the overall frame, right click right here, copy as react. All right, once you do that, we can now go in uh, to cursor and in a new Next.js project, uh, or you know, just a React project, Next.js is based on React, we could say something like, um, 
integrate this as the home page content ensure the background uh, or wait ensure the body element has 100 viewport height and the imported codes parent container has 100 percent width and height okay so now i'm just going to paste that and if you look at the pasted code it is inline uh, CSS properties. I do believe they're going to be allowing us to integrate, you know, Tailwind and all that cool stuff. Remember, it is, you know, it is alpha. Also, I'm using Grok Code Fast One just to make sure this thing knocks this stuff out as fast as possible. I'm already running it at npm rum dev, and we're going to let it work just a little bit and then check it out. And there we go. Check this out. Uh, it works um, exactly as we have it planned out. So it's almost responsive, but then what you could do is you could prompt the LLM to, to you know, tell it to use like uh, fluid topography um, for the headline and all this stuff uh, and using the clamp property perhaps to make it truly fluid and integrated. And so there you go. That's a very quick look at paper. I think there's a ton of promise here. Um, especially with the, sh the built-in shaders effects. It's kind of like, you know, having an integrated unicorn studio within f like a Figma-like app. So there's still a lot of work, obviously, that they need to integrate for a lot of different, you know, properties and stuff. Like I, I noticed, I didn't see anywhere where you could specify things like max width or minimum width and all that stuff. So they have a ways to go. Very cool for what it is. Always exciting having new tools. Don't be one of those people who crap like every, who crap on every you know, time there's like a new tool coming out. Out. You want a lot of tools. You want competition. That's best for everybody. All right. I'll stop talking and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.